Star Fox Zero. Is that its name or the amount of fun you have while playing it? <laughs> Zing! <laughs> no, seriously, reviews are pretty mixed though. All on today's stuff that sucks. So right off the bat, I want to say that I played Star Fox Zero and my, my personal opinion of it is it's average. It's not amazing. It's not terrible. It's somewhere right in between. Which, for a Nintendo title, is a pretty big deal. Which is why I'm talking about it on this episode of Stuff That Sucks. There's this segment of gamers that love the Star Fox game, and there's another that hate the Star Fox game, and there's just been a lot of mixed reactions in general to Star Fox Zero. And when it's a Nintendo game, something of this caliber, it should have been overwhelmingly positive. I mean, most AAA games that take a long-ass time to make either receive overwhelmingly positive reviews or positive reviews. Very rarely do games like this get such a heavily mixed reaction, I guess. The first Star Fox game I ever played was on the Super Nintendo. And I was young, I really didn't understand how it worked. Um, I was used to sprite-based 2D, you know, platformers at the time. This was something new and interesting. What really freaked me out, though, was the box. The box in the Super NES had this, like, semi-realistic fox doll. It wasn't like a puppet, like the new ones have these cute little puppets. It was a doll and it looked freaky and it freaked me out because it looked like a child's play toy. <laughs> but when Star Fox 64 came out, wow. I see him up ahead. Let's rock and roll. That game has been seared into my memory for forever. And I think it had the same effect on a lot of people from my generation. But after the 64 version came the slow decline of the Star Fox brand. You know, minus the 3DS remake. But uh, the problem is Star Fox Zero was supposed to be the game that was going to breathe new life into the franchise. It was going to revive the Star Fox franchise. And whether you personally liked Star Fox Zero or hated Star Fox Zero, I think we can all agree that this game is not the game that's going to revive the franchise. The, the game is fun, um, but it has flaws, uh, generally because the game is just looks muddy. I'm told that's because the game has to devote so much power to rendering the visuals twice, once on the TV and then once on, on the gamepad, which is the other issue with the game, the gamepad. You know, sometimes, well, let's be honest, most of the time I don't want to use motion controls. The control scheme for me was, was a complete miss. It's a, I understand they're trying to utilize the hardware and make something, you know, really unique and to the Wii U with the gamepad, but it was just, I think there were a lot of small missteps in the game's design that are affecting the overall reception of it. And honestly, the complete lack of multiplayer is, is insulting to me. Come on, multiplayer, Star Fox multiplayer. Let's build a team, let's do some levels together. That would have been amazing. But alas, it is not in the game. Don't know why. Every week, our writers uh, do a, something called the Chatty Cast. Uh, you can watch it on our YouTube. We do it live. Uh, you can download it as well. And Steve Watts, who's our editor in chief at Shack News, had some really interesting and good points uh, about the Star Fox game. Yeah, to to hit the other end of the spectrum, and this will lead, lead neatly into our big topic. I also reviewed Star Fox Zero. Um, the embargo on that was up today, um, and that is not a good game kind of at its best when it's just shamelessly ripping off Star Fox 64. But at the same time, I could just go play Star Fox 64 when it tries to do its own thing, when it tries to sort of go off on this, in these strange directions where they're like, oh, it's a twist on the old version. Um, it gets kind of boring and not good. Mm -hmm. But they do something cool with the Star Wolf battle that makes it a lot more dynamic. Uh, and it's like, okay, that's a, that's a positive change. That's cool. But I'm still in my R-Wing. That's what I want to do in these games. Stop stop making me get into these other crappy vehicles, you know? Asif Khan, CEO of Shack News, you guys know him as Man with the Briefcase, also had some really good points uh, about the Star Fox game as well, because he's a huge Star Fox fan. It sounds so terrible. Everything... It's, it's like, hey, not, did you like Star Fox 64? Well, we made it worse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's kind of the thesis statement. We also reviewed the Star Fox game. Uh, you can click on the link in the description below to read the full review. And although it wasn't as harsh as other sites, or it wasn't as easy on it as other sites, um, it still had some valid points. I'll read some of the review now. 
Star Fox is a frustrating experience not simply due to its unpredictable difficulty spikes or fidgety controls, but because I hate to see so much squandered potential. The most glaring shortcomings of Star Fox Zero are in the areas where it tries to differentiate itself from its blueprint. Zero is mostly an unabashed remake of Star Fox 64. Done right, Star Fox is about repetition and perfection, learning the stage layouts and enemy patterns, becoming a crack shot and defending your teammates in thrilling dogfights. All of that is present in Star Fox Zero, which makes it puzzling how frequently Nintendo and Platinum Games felt the need to stray from that course. It's a game that doesn't have the courage to be itself, so it throws every half-baked designed idea it has at you instead. Next time, Nintendo, listen to the rabbits. Never give up! Trust your instincts! Now the president of Platinum Games also stepped down. Due to the majority of the negative reception of Star Fox Zero? Hmm? I don't know. It could just be a complete coincidence. The re thing I'm really, really curious about, and this is why I love YouTube and comments, is I wonder if it's a generational gap between the people who played the early Star Fox games and someone who has never played a Star Fox game or has maybe only played Star Fox Adventures. And I really hope that's not the case because that would be a terrible introduction to the franchise. So like, do me a favor, in the comments below, tell me if you liked Star Fox Zero, if you hated Star Fox Zero, if you were eh about Star Fox Zero, and tell us your age. 18, 24, 30. I'm, cu I, I'm curious if it is a generational gap thing. If people like me, because I'm older, don't like it because I'm like, oh, it's not Star Fox Zero, it's not Star Fox 64, it's just trying to copy Star Fox Zero. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really curious. And if, it, if this was your first Star Fox game you've ever played, let us know in the comments and let us know if you liked it. That's also a major key factor. And let us know if playing this made you want to go back and look at the Star Fox 64 one or play the 3DS one. I'm really curious to see that, that demographic and, and how the generation gap is affected by this. It, you know, honestly guys, what it comes down to is this game took a really long time to make, and based on what I played, I didn't really understand why it took such a long time to make. Uh, I wonder if it's just um, the Platinum Games' fault, if it's Nintendo's fault, I don't, I don't really know. I think it's a combination of everyone just kind of making poor, poor cho choices during the development cycle, because um, I still feel we don't have that definitive next-gen Star Fox game. So, and Nintendo, if you guys have been in the news lately, they have been really, really dropping the ball, and they've really got to get their shit together, or they're going to go the way of Sega. And we all know what happened to Sega. So, anyway guys, thanks for watching. For more videos like this and everything else gaming related, you're already in the right place. You're on ShackNews.com. Oh no! It's too hot! I can't take it anymore! I've got you now! Keep shooting! We've got one!